Alrighty then, folks. We are back with some more MS Saga. So our first attempt at vill villainy failed miserably, miserably. And so now we're going to go raid a spaceship that, you know, hasn't been touched in 200 years except for it totally has. But for some reason, the natives and the locals left it alone. But, as I pointed out last time, we gotta go to Bulgaria. And my joystick was being weird there and didn't want to run. Oh, right. Forgot the mountains go all the way to the edge of the planet. Or, all the way to the edge of the Mediterranean. But, oh well. Doesn't really matter. And theoretically, I should be cutting this out, but I'm not going to. Because I will forget. In later episodes, when I have more time before when they come out, I'll totally... I'll totally take out all the boring stuff. Plus three experience, totally not worth it. Later on, it feels like uh, Drag Legend of Dragoon experience, but later on, that'll actually matter. But right now, three doesn't. And if you've never played it, Legend of Dragoon was insanely fun, but the most annoying thing about it is they split experience at the end of the stage, or at the end of the battle. So, like, you'd get 21 experience, and since you had three people fighting, everyone would get set instead of everyone getting 21. Like, it was a really fun game, plus EXP values were a little bit low most of the time, so it made training really tough, and there are some bosses that you actually had to train against. I would love a sequel to it, but yeah. So we're gonna head down to Greece real quick, because I'm pretty sure there's nothing in Greece. Yeah. Completely empty. They could do so much, you know, the Bosphorus just doesn't exist anymore. Constantinople was right there. We're looking for that ship up there, though. Alright. Now that that's over... Yeah, we're heading for the ship up here. Honestly, I'm not really sure what ship this is. I originally thought it was one of the ones from Wing, but... Ah, I, I got nothing. But we find out in a moment that this ship hasn't been touched in 200 years, but it completely has because it's full of enemies. Um, and it's somehow still running. See, so there's two issues with this. One is ships in the Gundam universe, even... Uh, well, the main excuse for this one is for it's still running, is that ships in the Gundam universe use something called the Manovsky engine. That's not entirely true. Minovsky engines, while they do work uh, eternally on mobile suits, don't work eternally on ships. Because the Minovsky particles don't generate enough power to charge the whole thing, or to power the whole thing, for a second. So, they have to continually pump in HE3 to fuel the fusion reaction in the reactor. I.e. why the Jupiter fleet's important in UC, anyway. So, and the other way to dispute that is there's trees around it, whereas if it was Minovsky engine, it would be complete wasteland. So, in my theory on this is, this is a ship that's just, like, half buried in the ground, and every once in a while, the, like, random tribal natives worship it as a god, and everything around it is just dead. Like, there's just a dead circle, like, 200 meters or whatever. But this thing is freaking huge. Like, we're kind of big. That thing covers, like, half of Bulgaria. But actually, it might be in Romania, thinking about it now. I think we're right on the nor northern border of... Bulgaria slash Romania. Or at least like a fifth of Romania. Like, that thing's huge. It's also large enough for us to line up four mobile suits. So yeah, just imagine what they use this for. You can get like four mobile suits, or five mobile suits wide, and probably like three or four tall. More like six or seven tall. Like, I get that this might have been a cargo bay, but what the fuck did they have in here? But yeah, you also notice that the natives didn't, you know, harvest everything and use it to help build their city. So I don't think we've encountered one of these. Oh, wait, we have. This is just the save point. Kind of useful. Kinda not. 
I shouldn't have wasted that repair kit earlier, but I forgot that was so close to the opening. And yeah, there's chests in here. And we got a machine gun. I believe this is the Type 90 machine gun, or uh, the 90 millimeter Type YYD machine gun. It's slightly more powerful than the Saku machine gun. So we're giving it to Fritz. Yeah, it does five more damage. And we're giving Tristan the Zaku machine gun just in case he ever needs to use it. I don't think he will, but maybe for the boss. But yeah, this is a 90mm Federation machine gun. At the time, it was only used by, I believe, the ground GM. But nowadays, it's actually been retconned to where both the Zaku, uh, the Zaku 1 and Zaku 2s used it for a while. Because they could use captured Federation uh, anti-aircraft gun rounds for it. And most other people have used it. But, you know, this game, it was only used by the ground GM. And if you'll notice these things, these are terminals, basically. You just press buttons and they open a door eventually. They're used like three or four times. It's nothing really you need to know. Hey! And this is our first set battle. So remember how earlier in the game they had that uh, red one? The orange one, or the yellow, orangish ones are like mini bosses. Mm -hmm. We haven't leveled up yet, or this battle would be so much easier, because you can boost attack and kill Magellan in one hit. So yeah, you can see what the enemy is going to do mostly, but every enemy fights in a pattern because there's no AI in this game. So if you remember the pattern, you're perfectly fine. These guys are just going to continually shoot at us. But you'll notice at the bottom how we have the 2 EN. If we had 4, we'd be able to do a boost attack, but we don't at this point, so... Yeah, but this is a Type 61 tank. Basically, all they did was paint it tan and made it more powerful. The other ones are Magella top cannons, not to be mistaken with Magellan top cannons, which are something different. But uh, these are uh, long range artillery for the Zeonic army. They're easier to produce than Zaku's, so they started employing them after the stalemate happened around April or May. Um, the top can detach into a jet fighter. They don't do it in this game, but that was one of the main annoyances of them, is you would destroy the base, and then you'd also have to destroy the top part. But they have, uh, I believe, 180mm machine gun, and then the 260mm main gun. And they can shoot targets up to, I think, 200 kilometers away or something ridiculous like that. But they can fly, which is their main annoyance. But yay, Tristan got boost attack. And Fritz got chewed all. And notice how before we needed 20 experience level up, now we need 80. Yeah, that's usual. So. Whoops. Oh no, it's status, not equip. Yeah, so Tristan, or er, Fritz can shoot all the people, and Tristan can attack one enemy with a strong attack. But you need a sword or an axe equip, so. He's fine right now, but later on, if we get him a spear, he won't be able to use it. But he gets another attack that's pretty good. But yeah, so there's branching paths here. If you go forward, like where we're facing, you'll fight the boss. But if you go up here, you'll unlock, or you'll get one of the first uh, explosive type weapons, which is pretty nice. So we're going to get that. Plus, we need the experience. Yeah, Majelikai. So, ironically, this is painted like the Garma Zabi one. So, it's orange, so it's the Garma Zabi Magella attack, ta attack tank. Which, you know, Garma is just crazy enough to actually have his own Magella, too. I shot the wrong one. Oops. Well, really, Tristan? Really? We got lucky that Tristan or that Fritz didn't die. Freaking arsehole. So you heal more out of battle, so I generally try to use those out of battle, but we didn't really have a choice there. And we'll shoot all just for the lulls. You can shoot all with basically anything. 
even a bazooka. But later on in the game, we'll be using those every battle. Because we'll get back chargers, which allow Fritz to just shoot all in the beginning of the battle. But you'll notice we got a Magellan top cannon. So for some Zakus, they literally ripped the cannon out of a Magella and had the Zaku use it as a main weapon. I believe it's too large for Fritz. Uh, no, actually, Tristan can equip it if we wanted him to. We don't, though. So we're going to give that to Fritz right now. So this is a bazooka type weapon. Basically, it requires three energy to attack, so you can't use it immediately, but it does a lot of damage. It's pretty nice. And I don't believe we can go past here. Oh no, there's something in here. Oh, metal shield. Awesome. So yes, there are shields in the game. Uh, we're giving that to Fritz, or to Tristan. We should really actually should give it to Fritz. Yeah, you know what, let's do that, because he needs the armor more than Tristan does. <coughs> but this door, oh. It's a door later that will. There's some door around here that's blocked off by the enemy. Not by the enemy, by a lock. Which is the enemy, but not the enemy we're fighting. Sorry, I just put something randomly stuck in my throat. I'll probably edit all, out all the coughing. Yeah, so those were basically worthless to fight. But we did it anyway, so meh. Hey, tons of Magella Kai. Or Type 61 Kai's. Never mind, they're the normal ones. I'm just blind. We want Tristan to hit that one, and we want to machine gun that one. And we'll finally use the Magella Top Cannon, because I forgot. Yeah, it, it's basically just a bazooka. But it requires a bit more energy, so... Um, I tend to load everyone up with bazookas later in the game, but for now, we won't use that very often. The shoulder cannon's really nice, too. But we won't get that for a little while, either. Yep. Oops. Hey, we didn't take any damage on this fight. The the fight didn't actually matter cuz you know, 6 experience. Oh. I I had thought we were fighting that one. Not that we got a random encounter in front of that one. Oh hey, our first mobile suit enemy. This is also a Zaku one that happens to be one of the supply versions. So, oh, it's a prototype Saku even, so it's like a, a MS-03 or something. It's like the Wagyu, but not the Wagyu. So, with mobile suit enemies, if you melee them, they can attack back. I.e. how that fight with the Zaku was in the beginning of the game. This one also has a Zaku machine gun and an iron axe, apparently. I don't think we get an iron axe from him. I believe we got the upgraded weapon from the boss, though. But who knows, we might. Let's see, boost attack, and oh we can't 
We can't shoot all, but we can Magella Top Cannon. And then kill it. Oh, well. Hey, one more of those fights and we can level up. But yeah, we didn't really get anything from that fight. Which sucks, but oh well. Uh, some of the best weapons you can get in the game are actually monster drops. Which makes the game pretty odd. Hey, look, it's an actual combat. Uh, Zaku won. So yeah, you'll notice it has both shoulders. Yeah, you can totally do that in this game. Yeah, um, you're gonna hit that one and you're just gonna throw a regeneration kit on yourself. Um, after I start training like crazy, items really won't matter because we'll have so much money it'll be ridiculous. So it doesn't really matter that I waste the regeneration kits now, or repair kits. Oh, hey, it's a Magella Top Cannon. Yeah, so we can shoot all with the Magella Top Cannon. I don't believe it actually does more damage, but we can do it. Yeah, later on we can change, like, the shoulder armor on everyone, so we can give, like, the GM spikes like we're going to. Hey, we got the right, uh, the right shoulder armor for Fritz also. So Fritz just got the ability Grenade, which is an, basically an unaspected damage attack that ignores armor. It's pretty nice. We'll be using those a lot later, especially Mega Grenade. This one with the save point? Okay, so these are special chests. They're locked. You need uh, hacking tools, I believe they're called. Those ones are limited in the game, though way late in the game you can buy a thing that'll, uh, or you can buy them. But the only problem with the hacking tools that you can buy, oh, that's actually the boss, we're gonna ignore that one for now, is by the time you can buy them, they're useless. So we're gonna go through this other door real quick. Yeah, so this one requires a card key at level one. We'll get that pretty soon. Um, there is a glitch in this game that I haven't done it recently, but like you go up to one of the lights, you turn around, and then you move backwards up to one of the lights. And you eventually clip through the wall if you keep doing this. I'm not going to do it because I find it cheaty, but you can walk through one of the doors. You'll only be able to do it once, so I always suggest you do it on after you go through this one because the next one requires a level three key. But the thing that's inside that one is really good. But yeah, it might actually be this light. I'm not exactly sure. I know it's one of the lights, and you just kind of do this for a little while, and you can shimmy through the back wall. And you, you walk out of bounds, but the key to, or the thing that unlocks this door is actually behind this door. So if you walk into the back of it, it'll pop open. But it only, ha it only works once, from what I remember. So you can either do it on that one, or you can wait till the middle of the game and do it on the last one. But the thing that's in the level 1 and the level 5 are both really trash. The level 3 is the one you want. Of course, you guys probably already know what it is, because it's really good and I really like it. But oh well. Yeah. Um, the problem with Grenade is it takes TP. Which, for now, we need it to heal, so we're not going to do that. Once we get our dedicated healer, it won't be an issue, though. Though, eventually, our dedicated healer is the first one to get bits. So, eventually, Fritz will take back over. Or one of our other characters, Gavinger, will be the healer. I think also Reznor gets a heal, but we don't unlock her till way late in the game. Yeah, the boss is right behind this door. If we can ever get to the save point. But I think after we get to the save point, I'm going to take a break real quick and get some water and try to get this shit out of my throat. This is starting to bug me. So 
Sweet, we did a critical. Actually, you know what? This is 21 minutes, so I'm just going to end the episode here because I'm basically going to do doubles or even triples of these videos, so it's not a big deal. But I'll end the video here, and then in the next one, we'll go fight the boss. We'll go do all that story junk, and then we'll be going for, we'll be going towards our first actual enca uh, interesting encounter. But for now, folks, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, you should like. If you didn't, you should dislike. I don't actually care, and I don't remember how to look at them. But, you know, why not just do it, okay? <laughs>